Now we know one of the coolest parts about March Madness is finding out which one of the Cinderella's is actually going to put on the glass slipper. We've seen Loyola Chicago make runs. We saw FAU and even San Diego State make the Final Four last year. So is there a double-digit seed that could get past not only the first round, but enter the Sweet 16 and possibly beyond? Well, after looking through, and I know there's some really sexy picks out there, Sanford and Bucky Ball, it's a really great situation, even though Kansas does look like they're getting healthier. We're going to find out more about McCullers here soon. The team I'm going with is New Mexico mm -hmm. for many reasons. Now, some people say they may be a little bit overseeded. Some people say Clemson may be a little bit underseeded. But when you look at the numbers and you really break down who's playing the best now, Clemson's playing pretty much its worst basketball of the season, and New Mexico is without a doubt playing their best. So let's crunch the numbers a little bit. New Mexico has the highest scoring offense in the Mountain West. New Mexico has the fewest turnovers per game in the Mountain West. New Mexico leads the Mountain West in not only steals, but blocks as well. And they're 8-0 on a neutral floor. But it's not just about the numbers. You need great storylines. Well, New Mexico's got them in spades. They have Eddie House and Jamal Mashburn's son. Oh, and Rick Patino's son, Richard, is their coach. And I think he's the guy that knocked Rick Patino's team at St. John's out of the tournament. You put all that together, and New Mexico will beat Clemson. Then they're going to beat Baylor. And I'll tell you this much. They probably got a pretty good shot to beat Arizona or Nevada, who could be another double-digit underdog when they make it to the Sweet 16. We're going to find out. That's the best part of it. It's like American Idol. The coolest part is always the first couple days. You can see the train wrecks and the underdog stories. Give me New Mexico in the West region. That's my double-digit seed. David, who you got? I like that pick. Well done. The entire Mountain West plays such good basketball. But how about another Mountain West team in the same region in Nevada? Yeah. Finished like second in the Mountain West. And I love that you're picking. So New Mexico would have to beat Clemson, like you said, and then possibly match up with the three-seed Baylor, assuming that they get by Colgate. But this whole bottom half of the West Quadrant is really cool right here because Nevada's going to have the first-round matchup with Dayton, Nevada being the 10-seed, Dayton being the 7. And then we've talked so much about Arizona. Do we really believe in Arizona? The three of us were at the Final Four when Caleb Love really took over for North Carolina, beat Duke, made it to the national championship. They ended up losing to that Kansas team. We've also seen Caleb Love be sort of problematic had to transfer out of North Carolina. He's at Arizona now. You could have a potential Nevada-Arizona second-round matchup. And then for the Sweet 16 in the bottom half of that West Quadrant, what if it's New Mexico 11 seed, Nevada 10 seed, mm. a rematch that we've seen throughout their conference play this year. And then obviously NC State is one that I just keep having a lot of question marks. You know, in the bulk of the season in February there, they lost a lot of basketball games, but then finished the season on a five-game win streak, ran through the whole state in North Carolina with wins over Duke. Duke and UNC. They also beat Virginia to capture their first ACC championship since 1987. They're an 11 seed in the South region, match up with Texas Tech in the first round. Just, I don't know, I'm, I'm going back and forth on whether I want to have NC State make a deep run. Yeah, and, and people kind of, they're on both sides of the fence of, well, it's, it's good if you make a run in your tournament, conference tournament, get the momentum going into the NCAA. A lot of the data says that it's, it's, doesn't behoove you as much. Now, I know I think NC State played like five games in five days, but if you're a team like Auburn mm -hmm. that only had to play three games in three days, that, that's totally different. I, I'm a firm believer in you want to be playing your best ball when you get to the conference tournament, get in the NCAA tournament. Uh, and there's some sneaky teams, Blaine, that, that now I don't think there's going to be a 16 beat a one. I don't no, think there's going to no, be a 15 so. beat a two. No. But I, I tell you, there's some in that 10 through 14 range. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, it's a 12 5 I'm looking at right now, and a team that I'm looking at right now to be my. Cinderella, I think I'm going to go with the James Madison Dukes. You think they're going to be Wisconsin? I think Wisconsin oh, has vulnerabilities. I do. I mean, I know Wisconsin's playing well lately, but they have struggled throughout the year. And let's look at this. Let's look at this James Madison team. There's two teams right now in, in this tournament with 30 plus wins. That's UConn and James Madison. Let's go back and look at last year. What team that made a huge run last year had 30 plus wins? That's Florida Atlantic. Right, I know it's the Sun Belt and it's James Madison. It's a little bit different, and for me to say they're going to go that far, uh, how far little... do you got them going? I mean, 
I look at their matchups right now. Wisconsin beatable. I've seen Duke be beatable, be beatable before. Yeah. Um, especially you have Terrence Edwards Jr., who's an absolute talent. Uh, James Madison has weapons. They run an efficient offense. They don't turn the ball over. And I think Terrence uh, Edwards Jr. is good enough to almost play anywhere in the country if he wanted to. And, and if they can get hot at the right time and take care of the ball, they have room to win a couple games. So I do think you're a 30-plus win team. Florida Atlantic was in the same way, and you come out hot. I think James Madison can roll a couple wins together. Yeah, I, I feel like James Madison just got a bad draw, man. When when I watch Wisconsin, AJ Store, the the way he's come on has totally changed that team. You know, Wisconsin kind of hit that lull. We were, we you know they were a top ten ranked team in the country, and then lost you know a decent amount of games in a row. And then AJ Store really turned it on. You look at Chucky Hepburn, which I think is one of the best names in college basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh, that game against Illinois, they played where it was it was AJ Store versus Terrence Shannon. I mean, that's about as good as, as college basketball you're going to get. I, I think if James Madison would have got like the St. Mary draw or the Gonzaga draw, you know, a team maybe out of that WCC, uh, it had just been a lot better for them than Wisconsin because Wisconsin down low with Kroll and, and you know, Wall and, and you know, kind of the, the front court that they have. It's going to be a hell of a game. I mean, you're going to have to beat good teams to advance anyway. Uh, you look at the Sun Belt, man, they were no joke. You look at App State, what they did, I you know, I know they didn't make the tournament, but JMU, I mean, they're a team, like, like Blaine said, that, you know, they, they know how to win. And at this point in time, it's about guard playing, knowing how to win. That's why I got New Mexico. We will talk about bad draws. There's two other double-digit seeds that I really like a lot. That's Drake and UAB. So that's the 10 seed in Drake out of the East, and then UAB, the 12 seed out of the East. And we talked just about how this region is is such a gauntlet. So UAB with the San Diego State first-round yeah. matchup, who went to, what, the national championship last year, mm-hmm. right? So that's the 12-5 there. And then Drake would get Washington State in the first round. But even if they win, that's a possible second-round matchup with Iowa State. God, do we and, like Drake versus Iowa State? State in the set is is that gonna be the first just big dog I, to go? I down? don't, man. I like Iowa State. I know they're playing so, so they good. They just right held now. they just held Houston to 41 points in this conference championship. They're playing so good. And then for UAB, let's say you're able to get by San Diego State, who plays suffocating defense themselves. Congratulations, you're probably gonna meet up with in-state opponent Auburn in the Yeah, state. and I just you know, you talk about playing with house money and all that stuff's great, but uh, I tell you, you look at that East region, it is just an absolute nightmare. I, I almost if it, there was any possible way for me to feel bad for UConn, which deep down I don't because they won it last year, I just feel like they got screwed. I feel like that the selection committee was so bad this year. It, it was It's about as bad as I've seen it. I know it's not an easy job. I'm not saying it's it's an easy job, but I, I just feel like they, they really underperformed as far as spreading out the tournament in a way that rewarded people uh, for you know how they played. I don't know how. it. There's just no way the committee can ever say the conference tournament matters anymore. When you put all four teams, you put UConn, who won the Big East, you put Auburn, who won the SEC, you put Illinois, uh, who won the Big Ten, and obviously Iowa State, who won the Big 12, along with two teams that played in the Final Four last year Mm -hmm. in FAU and San Diego State. And that's not even talking about Drake. I just, again, we have way too many athletic directors and lawyers making these decisions. They don't need to make them. Y'all need to be worried about how much money is in the school budget. We need to have actual basketball people making these decisions. We need to have actual football people making the the playoff selections in college football. We've got to stop letting bakers try to be blacksmiths. It just doesn't make sense. We need to listen. You know, this isn't a math test. We need actual sports people in there that, that are in that realm that understand what's going on. But we want to know who you're picking as your Cinderella. It's got to be a double-digit seed. I don't want to see some, you know, four seed that you got going the Elite Eight. Like somehow that's going to be, a, you know, the most shocking surprise of all time. We're also going to be live streaming the first round uh, on Thursday uh, of March Madness. So come hang out with us. Uh, it's going to be a great time. We're going to put the link for merch as well. Going to be doing it from a great cigar bar. Going to let y'all know all the details about that when you see us live. That's going to be at noon Eastern. So 11 Central gives us a little bit of time uh, to talk about your bracket, to talk about our brackets, to unveil them once we know who those playing games actually are. BetOnline.ag. Yes. Go place your bets, create a bracket, and tell them Crane & Company sent you. What's up, YouTube? Do us a favor. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn that notification bell on so you know whenever we drop content. Have a good weekend.